Hello and welcome to this edition of Shelby This Week. Here are some of the stories we have coming up for you. Many residents are happy to hear that they can finally visit the hair salon or barber shop. We have more details coming up. And Partridge Creek and Lakeside Mall are both now back open for business. We have these stories and more on this edition of Shelby This Week. Stylists and barbers are expected to be extremely busy this week as salons around the state have been allowed to reopen today after almost three months of mandated closure. We spoke with the salon owner to get her take on what you can expect when you visit the salon. So the difference now with Salon Lux is we can't have as many people in our business. So we have to do shifts as far as the employees we have to put clients in every other station. So we have to social distance. Um, clients will be, they'll have their temperature checked when they come in. There's a hand washing station. They have to fill out uh, a questionnaire to make sure that they're not sick. The disinfecting, which we've always done that before, but it's kind of heightened now. So we have disinfectant everywhere in the salon, hand sanitizer, alcohol, everything you can think of. Salons and barbershops, as well as nail salons, massage rooms, and tattoo parlors have also been allowed to reopen across the state after they were ordered to close in mid-March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Governor Whitmer has not announced as of yet when gyms, casinos, and theaters will be allowed to reopen. Industry-specific guidelines for the safe reopening of salons and barbershops were finally approved on June 10th. The guidelines submitted to Governor Whitmer's office on May 21st were created by a working group of industry professionals and the Michigan Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs. In an effort to bring back some sense of normalcy during the COVID-19 pandemic, on June 8th, Governor Whitmer loosened restrictions to allow restaurants to reopen statewide. We spoke with a local restaurant owner to get her take on how the process has been since being allowed to reopen. Kyle Warzabach has more. Mr. B, Shelby Township, how can I help you? Over the last three months, many local restaurants looked a lot different. For Mr. B's Bar and Grill, carryout orders help keep the business alive. And owner Debbie Koshalek says it taught them a good lesson. We did all our specials to go and just tried to provide everything good for the carryouts and had a lot of good compliments. Brought in a lot of new people. So hopefully that continues. Hello, how Hi. you doing? Just last week, restaurants were allowed to reopen for indoor dining, but things still look and feel different. Mr. B's offers different options for customers to make them feel as comfortable as possible. We do half a capacity. Uh, we're offering when a customer walks in, if they'd like to wear a face mask, they can. We have plastic wear, regular silverware. We had throwaway menus done. We do a sanitizer on the tables and we do another sanitizer, so we double up on that. The bar, we put tables at the bar so the bartender can keep distance from the customer. All the employees wear face masks, gloves, all the cooks wear face masks, gloves. Now if you're still not comfortable eating indoors, Mr. B's offers outdoor seating. And if you want to order drinks, online drink ordering can now be done from your phone. So when you walk through the front door, you can scan your phone on an app and it will bring up our drink menus. And eventually we'll put our menu on it. So if you come in as a customer, go sit on the patio, you can get on that app and go ahead and order your drinks and your food so there's no contact there with a menu or anything like that. But for those who are still not comfortable with eating at a restaurant, Mr. B's have accommodated customers' needs with curbside pickup and in some cases, delivery. We don't do delivery, but we have a lot of elderly customers so during the time we did deliver to them, whatever made it convenient for them. A lot of people would pull up, just pop open their trunk and whatever makes a customer feel comfortable, we're here to provide for them. Mr. B's is now back to their normal business hours and they are ready to greet you with a covered up smile. For Shelby This Week, I'm Kyle Orzabach. Partridge Creek Mall in Clinton Township and Lakeside Mall in Sterling Heights are both now back open for business. Both shopping malls recently reopened after nearly three months of being closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Both shopping malls current hours are 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday and from noon to 6 p.m. on Sunday. 
According to both shopping locations' websites, some stores may offer shopping by appointment only. So before heading out to the mall, shoppers are encouraged to call the store or check the online directory for opening details and information on health and safety procedures. The play areas as well as the water fountains at both locations are closed until further notice. Shoppers are required to wear face coverings when entering the stores, and shoppers are also asked to observe the social distancing guidelines and stay six feet away from other shoppers. In some stores, hand sanitizer will be available. For more information, you may visit shoppartridgecreek.com and shop-lakesidemall.com. Still ahead on Shelby This Week, $20 million in small business grants will be distributed by Macomb County. We have more details ahead. And Governor Whitmer is extending the ban for evictions. Stay with us for more Shelby This Week. We scored? Yeah, we scored. We're going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. OK, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm going to need that back. No. Nope. Kevin. I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs, and that's still not enough to put food on the table. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Macomb County on June 11th announced a plan to distribute $20 million in small business sustainability grants using Federal CARES Act funding. The Macomb County Office of Planning and Economic Development will lead the grant program, which will benefit businesses affected by the shutdown during the COVID-19 outbreak. The grants are a part of the Macomb County Cares for Small Business program, a $70 million initiative made possible through the country's $152 million allocation of Federal CARES Act funding. The program includes PPE kit distribution, grants, and a variety of efforts to prepare organizations for safe opening operations and future emergency preparedness needs. The grant application will be available at MacombBusiness.com through June 24th at 11.59 p.m. Governor Whitmer has signed an executive order to extend the protections for tenants and mobile homeowners from being evicted from their residences until June 30th. Whitmer signed the original order on March 20th. The order protects tenants from being evicted unless they pose a substantial risk to property or another person. It also relieves courts from certain statutory restrictions so they can pause eviction-related proceedings until after the COVID-19 state of emergency. The Shelby Township firefighters hosted a mobile food distribution along with Gleaner's Mobile Food Pantry this past Saturday. We teamed up with Gleaner's um, to try and get some food out to the community, the people that might be struggling. Our goals today are to serve between 350 and 400 families. We've purchased approximately 6,000 pounds of food and uh, we want to give back to the community. You know, uh, they've always supported us as uh, firefighters here. We appreciate that and we felt it was important for us to give something back as well. The donations included fresh fruits and vegetables, beverages, cereal, canned goods, personal hygiene items and more. The fire department's goal was to feed 350 families. The event was absolutely free to anyone that was in need. Coming up next, the popular children's restaurant Chuck E. Cheese's may no longer be able to keep their doors open. We have more details coming up. And a group of seniors are getting back into shape after being in quarantine. Stay with us for more Shelby This Week. I got it! Hi. Can you help me? I got it. Thank you. No problem. Just like the rules to surviving Zombieland, there are steps you can take to be prepared for an emergency. It's the right thing to do. Talk with your family to make a plan. Look for safe areas to meet up if separated. And stock up on supplies. It's never too early to get prepared. So start now. Right now? 
right now. You can't predict emergencies, but you can be ready. You're welcome, America. Visit ready.gov today to learn more. My Shiro doesn't always wear a cape, but she always has time for a hug, a smile, for going the extra mile. My Shiro stretches every dollar, puts in long hours, puts others first. But now it's your time, Mom. When you're ready to retire, we want you to be able to enjoy it. It's time to start saving now. A free three-minute online chat can give you the personalized tips you need to start boosting your retirement savings today. Visit aceyourretirement.org slash Shiro. A part of many of our childhoods may be coming to an end. After months of keeping their doors closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Chuck E. Cheese's is approaching bankruptcy and may have to close all of their restaurants. The popular children's restaurant is nearly $1 billion in debt, according to the Wall Street Journal. The brand behind the food and games establishment, CEC Entertainment, is attempting to obtain a $200 million loan to keep the business afloat. The brand announced that it would be offering its top executives retention bonuses with the hopes that they would stay on during these challenging times. Chuck E. Cheese has said that it would pay nearly $3 million total to three executives, including $1.3 million to their CEO, according to the Securities and Exchange Commission filing that was shown. The Texas-based restaurant currently operates 610 locations in 47 states, including its location in Sterling Heights, but had to close its doors due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which made it extremely difficult for the company to raise capital. Now that Michigan is easing restrictions, there are plenty of people that are looking forward to getting back to enjoying their normal routines. For some seniors, that means being able to mingle and engage with their friends. And to help seniors stay active, the Fitness in the Park program with instructor Sabrina combines walking and aerobic exercising while safely distanced outdoors. I think that coming to her class for the last two years has been one of the best things I have done for myself. It's really made me stronger and I feel a lot healthier and better for it and we all love her. She has a fan club. Well, I've been doing this exercise like for 25 years, but I would like to see some men come to the class. I don't know why they're bashful, but uh, it's, a, it's a great workout for men and women and it's not that strenuous. I'm 94, so if, if I can take it, they could take it. The seniors meet at Hickory Grove Pavilion at Riverbends Park at 10 a.m. on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Registration is not required. However, the program is limited to only senior center members. Good news, the Great Macomb County Scavenger Hunt event is still on. The event will be held on Saturday, June 27th, and check-in starts at 12 p.m. and the scavenger hunt ends at 6 p.m. The event will support businesses throughout the community, and the scavenger hunt will start at the Sterling Heights Regional Chamber Office parking lot. The cost is $20 per car, and $5 from each registration will be donated to Friends of Foster Kids. When registering, please fill out the box asking how many people will be in the car so that they are aware of how many goods are needed for each participant. The event is limited to the first 100 cars that register. For more information and to register for the event, please visit shrcci.com. That's all we have for this edition of Shelby This Week. Remember, you can always watch us on Facebook and just search Shelby TV. We will leave you with more scenes from some of our senior residents exercising at Riverbends Park. <laughs>